Hello everybody, I am Tanya Pandey and you are watching Quartz this week on Live Law. It's time for our weekly court updates, so let's get into it. We'll go through the Supreme Court judgments first. The Supreme Court on 21st May granted bail to YSR Congress MP K. Raghunam Krishnam Raju from Andhra Pradesh who was arrested by Guntur CID on May 14 for alleged sedition and promotion of communal hatred over his speeches. A bench of Justices Vineet Saran and V.R. Gavai observed that custodial interrogation would not be required as all statements of the petitioner are on record. However, the bench imposed a condition that Raju should not give media interviews and make press statements during the period of investigation. The Apex Court allowed Raju's appeal against an order of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, which had refused to entertain his bail application and had asked him to approach the Sessions Court. The Supreme Court noted that jurisdiction of the trial court as well as the High Court under Section 439 CRPC are concurrent and merely because the High Court was approached by the petitioner before the trial court, it would not mean that the High Court was not to consider the plea. The court held that the High Court ought to have considered the bail application on merits. The Supreme Court has upheld the provisions of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, which applies to personal guarantors of corporate debtors. The bench of Justices L. Nageshwar Rao and S. Ravindra Bhatt held that approval of a resolution plan relating to a corporate debtor does not operate so as to discharge the liabilities of personal guarantors. The bench dismissed the petition challenging notification dated 15 November 2019 and the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Rules 2019. Petitioners had also sought a declaration that Sections 95, 96, 99, 100 and 101 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code are unconstitutional in so far as they apply to personal guarantors of corporate debtors. Last year, the court had transferred to itself the petition, which was originally filed before the Delhi High Court and other High Courts. The Supreme Court has directed the central government and Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi, states of Haryana and Uttar Pradesh to provide dry ration to migrant workers in National Capital Region. The court directed that while providing dry ration, the authorities of the state shall not insist on an identity card for those migrant labourers who do not possess it at the time and on self-declaration made by the stranded migrant labourers, dry ration be given to them. There are further directions to set up community kitchens at well-advertised places in NCR for stranded migrant workers as well as their families and to ensure that they are provided two meals a day and to ensure that adequate transport is provided to stranded migrant workers in NCR who wish to return to their homes. The Supreme Court on 20th May stated the directions issued by the Allahabad High Court on May 17 for upgrading the medical facilities in the state of Uttar Pradesh on a war-scale footing. A vacation bench of Justices Vineet Saran and B.R. Gavai stayed the order after hearing the submissions made by Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta on behalf of the state of Uttar Pradesh. The Allahabad High Court, while considering a Suomoto case taken to deal with Covid issues, had passed a slew of directions on May 17 in relation to providing ambulances with ICU facilities in all villages, making oxygen beds available in all nursing homes, upgradation of medical college hospitals in the state, among other orders, on an urgent basis in a time-bound manner considering the COVID second wave. The Apex Court remarked that sometimes to give utmost relief to those suffering, unwittingly the courts overstep and pass certain orders that are not capable of being implemented. The Supreme Court urged a petitioner, having filed a habeas corpus plea under Article 32 against the illegal detention of his wife by her father to take recourse to Section 97 CRPC, which is the provision for search for persons wrongfully confined. Section 97 CRPC has become a dead letter because of these shortcuts, Justice Dinesh Maheshwari said. The vacation bench of Justices Maheshwari and Aniruddha Bose was hearing a habeas corpus petition by her husband alleging illegal detention of his wife by her father. Section 97 provides that if any district magistrate, subdivisional magistrate or magistrate of the first class has reason to believe that any person is confined under such circumstances, 
that the confinement amounts to an offence. He may issue a search warrant. The court dismissed the petition as withdrawn and gave liberty to the petitioner to take recourse under Section 97 CRPC. On 18th May, the Supreme Court issued notice on a writ petition seeking SIT or CBI investigation into the killings of two BJP workers in West Bengal, allegedly by the members of Trinamool Congress on May 2nd, when the Assembly election results were declared. A vacation bench of Justices Vineet Saran and B.R. Gavai was considering a writ petition filed by Biswajit Sarkar, brother of deceased BJP member Avijit Sarkar, who was allegedly killed by TMC members during the post-poll violence in West Bengal. Senior Advocate Mahesh Jait Malani, appearing for the petitioner, submitted that there was total inaction by the West Bengal police after the brutal murders and that there are attempts to subvert the investigation. Let us now take a look at judgments from the High Courts and other courts. The Calcutta High Court Division Bench, comprising of Acting Chief Justice Rajesh Bindal and Justice Arijit Banerjee, has delivered a split verdict on the pleas for interim bail of four Trinamool Congress leaders arrested by the CBI in the Narda scam case. While Acting Chief Justice Rajesh Bindal refused interim bail, Justice Banerjee held that interim bail should be granted. In view of the conflicting views of the judges, the matter has been referred to a five-judge bench. The case relates to bail granted to Ministers Pirhad Hakim and Subrat Mukherjee, MLA Madan Mitra and Sovan Chatterjee, who were arrested by the CBI from their Kolkata residences on May 17. In a significant ruling, the Punjab and Haryana High Court on May 18 observed that a live-in relationship may not be acceptable to all but it cannot be said that such a relationship is an illegal one or that living together without the sanctity of marriage constitutes an offence. The bench of Justice Jayashree Thakur made this observation in a matter pertaining to a live-in relationship couple who are both major and decided to enter into such a relationship and approach the court seeking protection of their lives and liberties against the immediate family members of the girl. Bombay High Court has said that prisoners have a right to their medical records under Article 21 of the Constitution of India and prison officials should provide the information on request. Medical records would include test results and medicines prescribed, the bench of Justices S.J. Kathawala and S.P. Tavade said. The court was hearing a petition seeking medical attention and release of 60-year-old lawyer activist Sudha Bharadwaj under trial in the Bhima Korigao Elgar Parishad case. Rajasthan High Court on May 21st dismissed self-styled Godman and life convict in a sexual assault case Asa Ram's plea for temporary suspension of sentences to pursue medical treatment. The bench of Justices Sandeep Mehta and Devendra Kachwaha, however, directed the district and jail administration to ensure that Asa Ram is provided with proper treatment a nutritious diet and a safe environment looking at his old age and medical condition. Tarun Tejpal, the founder and former editor-in-chief of the Helka, has been acquitted of all charges in the sexual assault and rape case of a junior colleague by the district and sessions court at Mapusa, Goa. Additional sessions judge Shama Joshi reserved her verdict in the seven-year-old case in April 2021. The trial was held in camera at Tejpal's instance. Those were the top stories for last week. I am Tanya Pandey and I hope you're taking good care of yourselves. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, now would be the time to do it. And click on the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss any of our updates. I wish you a great day ahead. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.